The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. That's 57, not a bit of a little 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 bit of a Men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. Fine tobacco that means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, again, it's Sunday, so let's go out to Beverly Hills to Jack. Wait a minute. Every week, it's the same thing. Let's go out to Beverly Hills to Jack Benny's house. Why don't we go to somebody else's house for a change? <laughs> yes, why not? Let's go out to the home of, uh, of, uh, the home of George Burns and Gracie Allen. <laughs> What are you doing? Oh, nothing, Gracie. Just reading a book. Oh. The man she was with tried to stop her, but she pushed him aside and staggered across the floor. George, if you're going to sit there reading a book, why don't you take off your shirt? Take off my shirt? Yeah. It's so thrilling the way your muscles bulge when you turn a page. <laughs> Gracie, my muscles don't bulge. You let me read. The man she was with tried to stop her, but she George, pushed... is today Sunday? Yes, yes. The man she was with tried to stop I'm her, glad she... it is because on Sunday, Jack Benny's on the air, and I wouldn't miss his program for the world. Well, he's on right now. If you want to hear him, turn on the radio. Mm, Jack Benny is wonderful. I think he's even funnier than Gene Herschel. <laughs> Gracie, he's on right now. Gene Herschel? No, Jack Benny. Oh. Oh, yes. I wouldn't miss him for the world. Mm. You know, George, if somebody came around and I didn't listen to Jack Benny's program, I'd kill myself. Gracie, turn on the radio. You can hear him. But if I killed myself, I wouldn't be able to hear the program next Sunday. And, and the program next Sunday would probably be better than the program I killed myself over. So that, that's why I make it a point never to miss Jack Benny. Okay, I'll turn it on for you. Oh, George, isn't that wonderful? What's wonderful? The way your muscles bulge when you turn the dial. Gracie. Take off your shirt. Gracie, will you please keep quiet so I can get Jack Benny's program? And, Don, when I walked into the library and I said to Rochester, what are you doing with those goldfish in your hand? What do you think he said to me? I don't know, Jack. What did he say? Well, Rochester looked right in my face and said... Gracie, why did you turn off Jack's program? Well, I wanted to tell you that if you hadn't reminded me that today was Sunday, I would have missed him. <laughs> look, Gracie, you could have found that out for yourself. All you had to do was go out in the kitchen and look at the calendar. The red numbers are Sundays. But, George, on our calendar, all the numbers are red. What? It fell in a bowl of ketchup. <laughs> Well, Gracie, go back into the kitchen, take the calendar out of the ketchup, and wipe it off. It's too late. You ate it for lunch. <laughs> I did? Well, yeah, George Burns, why didn't you tell me you like calendars? I love them. I love them. Now, Gracie, turn on the radio. You turn it on. Gracie, you're the one who wouldn't miss Jack Benny for the world. You turn it on. Hey, you just want to see my muscles bulge. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to see your muscles bulge. All right. But I'm not going to take my shirt off. <laughs> Okay, I'll turn it on. No kidding, Jackson. Did that really happen? Sure, Phil. And when a man got back on his horse, he said, <laughs> he said, that's why umbrellas have ribs in them. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> 
Don't be discouraged, Jack. I thought it was funny, too. Gracie, stop talking to the radio. Gracie, why did you turn it off? You were talking to me. I said stop talking to the radio. How do you know the joke was funny? You didn't hear the beginning of it. All you heard was the answer. Well, that's the only part you're supposed to laugh at. Oh, George, you're just jealous because he's so sophisticated and charming. Jack Benny? No, Gene Herschel. <laughs> Gene? Gene Herschel? Where did he come from? Denmark. Everybody knows that. Look, if you wouldn't miss Jack Benny for the world, why don't you keep listening? Instead of turning him on and off and on and off and on and off. Oh, Judge, you're cute. Say that again. Yeah, cute. Makes my Adam's apple do tricks, huh? No, nah, no. It makes your pivot tooth spin around and fan me. <laughs> Look, Gracie... Hey, quiet, George. I want to listen to Jack Benny. But, Don, you really ought to do something about your weight. Oh, Jack, I'm not so fat. I went on a diet and lost 10 pounds. 10 pounds? Don, 10 pounds off of you is like taking one bucket of smog out of Los Angeles. <laughs> Quiet, quiet, George. I want to hear the end of the joke. <laughs> that was the end of it. Don, Don, when I first hired you 13 years ago, you were thin. And that's the reason yeah, I gave you the I can't the understand you, George. Because I wanted Every a thin announcer. Every time Jack Benny comes on here, he starts talking. I'm not talking. Now. You're the one who wanted to hear him, and you keep on talking. There you go again. You know I wouldn't miss him for the world. I think Jack Benny is the funniest comedian on the radio. Gracie, if you go on to listen, I'm going to shut it off. George Burns. Why did you turn off the radio? Because I want to read my book. I just bought it. It's The Razor's Edge. Well, why buy it? You could read it in any barber shop for nothing. That's just... I never thought of that. Tomorrow, I think I'll go down to the vegetable market and read Strange Fruit. <laughs> Strange Fruit? We have that book right here. In the library? No, it would spoil it in the icebox. <laughs> I know. Gene Hirschholt wrote it. Know him very well. Now, go in the next room and listen to Jack Benny. You bet I will. And I hope he has better luck than he had last week. What do you mean? Well, last week he was expecting Lauren Bacall to be his guest star, and she didn't show up. Oh, yes, that's right. Gracie, would you please let me read my book? Judge, there's only one thing to do. If Jack wanted Lauren Bacall in his program and couldn't have her, well, he can have me. I'll go over to his studio right now, and I'll be Lauren Bacall. George, get your hat. But, Gracie... George, get your hat. Gracie, you can't be Lauren Bacall. Is Lauren pretty? Of course she is. Has she got that come-and-kiss-me-big-boy look in her eye? Of course she has. Is she exotic, alluring, and irresistible? Of course she is. George, get your hat. <laughs> was the best man played by Phil Harris and his 18 bridesmaids. And now, and now, hey, ladies Jackson, and gentlemen... Just once when I huh? finish a number, can't you say something nice? Not about the music, just about the boy. You don't have to make that crack about the bridesmaids. <laughs> Phil, when 18 men come to a broadcast wearing nightgowns, it calls for a comment. <laughs> Believe me. Them ain't nightgowns. Oh, them ain't, huh? <laughs> 
Phil. Phil, it's not them ain't. It's they aren't. Wow. <laughs> Get a load of my little boss. He's gone crepe, Suzette. <laughs> Phil, you don't even know what a crepe Suzette is. It's a Pasadena tortilla. <laughs> well, well, Phil, for once, you're right. Sure I'm right. Everybody ain't as stupid as you are. Stupid? Well. <laughs> That's a fine thing to say about me, Phil. After all I've done for you. What did you ever do for me? What did I do for you, Phil? Eleven years ago, I happened to be in Memphis, Tennessee, and I dragged you out of a bar, brought you out to Hollywood, put shoes on you, <laughs> stood you in front of 18 musicians, put a stick in your hand, and because you already had the shakes, you thought you were leading them. <laughs> And as a hint for you to wash your hair, somebody put you on a shampoo program. <laughs> what did I ever do for you? So what? So what? Phil, when I picked you up, you didn't even have a ham hock to your name. <laughs> That's the what. Look, Jackson, this may surprise you, but I had one of the greatest orchestras in the country before I ever heard of you. You had a great orchestra. I'll say I did. I was the leader, and I had a man at the piano by the name of a Turby. What? My first fiddle was a guy by the name of Heifetz. Toscanini made my arrangements. Stokowski played the clarinet, and I had a dame singing the blues by the name of Lily Pong. Well, you really had some great musicians. How come you got rid of them? They couldn't play poker. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. I can just picture all those people being in your band. Just talking about, we had a great orchestra. Why, we had one that didn't do anything but touch off the piano. Who was that? Lady Esther. <laughs> Phil, why don't you go down to Grauman's Chinese and put your head in the cement? <laughs> and keep it there. <laughs> and now, and now, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, hello, Dennis. Where have you been? Oh, I was over at the drugstore having a drink. I had a tomato ice cream soda. A what? A tomato ice cream soda. A tomato ice cream soda? Uh-huh. That must taste awful. What's in it? Two scoops of vanilla ice cream, some chocolate syrup, carbonated water, and a cherry. Well, but what about the tomato? She waited on me. <laughs> oh. oh, I see. I see, kid. You're, you're making up a little joke. Yeah, I make up jokes all the time. I know, I know. Now, come on, Dennis. Let's have your song. You're not the only comedian in the world, you know. <laughs> Dennis, I, I never said I was. I mean, uh, uh, Edgar Bergen, Bob Hope, Jack Haley, Eddie Cantor. And Gene Herschel. <laughs> Dennis, Gene Herschel isn't a comedian. He's on the radio as Dr. Christian. Oh, yeah. Dr. Christian, come down. Dennis. <laughs> Dr. Christian, I'll see you swinging from the highest job arm in the British... Now, cut that out! <laughs> I'm glad you stopped me. I was getting seasick. <laughs> no, for now, come on. Come on, Dennis. Let's have your song. Okay. Oh, uh, Jack, before Dennis's song, how about the commercial? Oh, oh yes, yes. I'm uh, sorry, Don, the, the commercial. I have the quartet right here. Don, Don, last week the quartet didn't show up, and we got along very well without them. And I think we can get along without them this week, too. Oh. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. You pay the sportsman $500 a week, don't you? Yes. Well, Jack, they took the whole $500 and spent it on this week's arrangement. They... They spent their whole salary? Gee. Fellas, what do you live on? <laughs> From the looks on the one on the end, it must be fattening. <laughs> well... Well, all right, Don. If they're that sincere about it, I'll listen to it this time. But I'm warning you. Now, Don, I'm warning you. This time, it better be good. I'll say it's good. All right, fellas, the Anvil Chorus. Wait Take a it, minute. boys. <laughs> Elephantine. 
cost them 300 <laughs> Well, tell them to take their anvil and get out of here. Now, come on, fellas. Out, out, out. See? Dennis, that was last week. Now, come on, let's have your song. Okay. You'll Always Be the One I Love by Ticker Freeman. And sung, <laughs> sung by Dennis Day. And it was really swell, Dennis. It couldn't have been sung better. And now... What's wrong with Dick Hames? <laughs> <laughs> what? There's nothing wrong with Dick Hames. I merely said that you sing beautifully. I suppose Andy Russell is bad, huh? <laughs> Dennis, look, Andy Russell is fine, and so is Dick Haynes. They're both great singers. And now... Bing Crosby ought to punch you right in the nose. 
Dennis, be quiet. Now, sit down. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our... Oh, darn it, more interruptions. Phil, answer the phone for me, will you please? You answer it, Jackson. It might be a collect call, and I love to see your skin roll up. <laughs> Don't be so smart. <laughs> Don, Don, will you answer the phone, please? Oh, I'm checking over the closing commercial. Dennis, will you answer the phone for Jack? Let Gene Herschel do it. Dennis! <laughs> now, stop being so... Oh, never mind. I'll answer it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Bailey, this is Rochester. Rochester. Rochester, what do you want? The dry cleaner is here. Are there any suits you'd like to have cleaned or pressed? Yes, yes. Now, let me see. How about your blue double-breasted one, boss? I'm wearing that. Uh, give him my gray gabardine. I'm wearing that. <laughs> Well, look, Rochester, have him press my tan suit. But, boss, you only wore that suit once. That was last week when you were rehearsing with Miss Lauren Bacall. I know. She steamed the crease out of it. <laughs> look, Rochester, have him press that suit and tell him to let the pants out two inches. Better let out more than that, boss. No, no, Rochester. The pants aren't that tight. They're not. Remember what happened last week when you bent over? Rochester. If UCLA could have broke through like you did, they'd have won the game. <laughs> Okay, okay, give him my... And give him my full dress suit, too. Your full dress suit? Yes, I may as well have it cleaned and pressed for the Academy Award dinner. Boss, for what you're gonna get, you could go in a T-shirt. <laughs> Look, Rochester, I'm not expecting an award this year. After all, I didn't make a picture. Maybe they'll give you an award for that. <laughs> oh, stop, and just give my suits to the cleaner. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Can I have Tuesday afternoon off? I want to go to the races at Santa Anita. But, Rochester, I thought on New Year's Day you made a resolution not to go to the races. I didn't go on New Year's Day. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, the reason I want to go Tuesday is because I got tips on two wonderful horses, Texas Sandman and Namby Pass. Oh, are they, are they good horses? Well, Texas Sandman is by shifting sands out of Swamp Queen... Uh-huh. And Nambi passes by bypass out of Sweet Nancy. <laughs> well, all right, Rochester, you can go, but you can't use my car this time. Take a yellow cab. A yellow cab? Yes, yeah, that's by rapid transit out of General Motors. <laughs> now, goodbye. Goodbye. I can't understand Rochester. He makes a New Year's resolution not to go to the races and then breaks it. Say, Jackson, I was at the races yesterday, and I bet on a horse called Fit Shampoo. Fit shampoo. Yeah, the dandruff came off him so fast, the other horses thought they were snowbound and froze to death. <laughs> oh, Harris, when you come home, Alice must think she's in Wonderland. <laughs> w. Look, Wanga. Phil. Hey, Mr. Benny. What? I once bet on a horse named Colgate. Dennis, let it go, will you? He came in first, and I got my own show. <laughs> Oh, Dennis, when you come home, your mother must think she's in a nut house. <laughs> well, at least that makes sense. There. Now, kid, let's not hold up the show anymore because our sketch tonight is very... Come in. Hello, Jack. Huh? Hello, big boy. Your worries are over. Baby is here. <laughs> Why, George, Gracie, what's this? Don't be bashful, Blue Eyes. If you want anything, whistle. <laughs> what? You know how to whistle, don't you? You just put your lips together and blow. <laughs> Gracie, what? Jack, I'm sorry for this. Oh. <laughs> but Gracie heard how you didn't get to kiss Lauren Bacall last week, and now she wants to be Lauren Bacall. You keep out of this, Humphrey. Mm. <laughs> Now, how about it, kiddo? You'll find me fascinating, so let's fast. <laughs> but, Gracie, I... Wow, that's the kind of a woman I could go for. Say, you're kind of cute, Sonny, but you're too young. Maybe, but I'm plenty hip. Oh. <laughs> I, um, I suppose your father told you how the bees carry pollen from flower to flower on their feet? Yes, he did. Well, I'd advise you to forget that. I tried it, and believe me, it's nothing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Look, Gracie, I, I know you meant well in coming over, but I'm trying to do a program. That's you? right, Gracie. You're embarrassing Jack trying to kiss him. Let's go home. With dry lips? Not on your life. Look, Gracie, if you really want to be kissed, why don't you forget about Jackson and grab yourself a hunk of glamour like me? Take it easy, Curly. Take it easy. There's plenty to go around. <laughs> Say, Gracie, do you know what you're saying? No, but I love it. <laughs> now, come on, Jack. Now, Let's... Gracie, you're holding up my program. Anyway, I can't kiss you right under George's nose. You can, but you won't like it that way. <laughs> oh, Gracie, stop all this nonsense and let's go home. No, George, we can't go now. Lauren Bacall disappointed him, and I'm not going to let him be disappointed again. But Gracie. <gasps> kiss me, Jack. Gracie. Kiss me. Gracie, where are you going? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wow, what a kiss. My hair's standing on end. Yeah, it slipped a little to the side, too. What? Gracie, you ruined my whole radio program. Radio program? Rick, George! George, let's hurry home. Why? Well, Jack Benny's on the air, and I wouldn't miss him for the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we hurry, we can catch the tobacco auction there. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, because the majority of America's hospitals are understaffed, once again an urgent appeal is being made for student nurses. In order to meet this acute need, all young women between the ages of 17 and 35 who are high school or college graduates are urged to apply to their nearest hospital or school of nursing. And now Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, Mr. F. E. Boone. At the American. Today, tomorrow, always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Listen to the words of a tobacco expert, a man whose business is tobacco, Mr. Fred Leonard Evans of Danville, Virginia, an independent tobacco buyer with 25 years' experience. He said, year after year, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy a fine quality leaf, that fine, ripe, mellow tobacco you can't beat for top smoking quality. I've smoked Luckies myself for 19 years. Quote, year after year, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine quality leaf. Unquote. Yes, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Evans can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. Remember... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank George and Gracie who appeared on our program tonight through the courtesy of Maxwell House Coffee. I also want to thank Gene Herschold, who was here in spirit. And uh, he's cheaper that way. <laughs> Good night, folks. This is NBC, the national broadcasting...